Next, helping homeless youth in Cambodia recover their childhoods and reach for a better future. Special correspondent Fred to Sam Lazaro has our story. Each day, workers with a group called Friends International try to redefine normal for street kids across Cambodia's capital, Phnom Penh. No, no, no. In makeshift gatherings like this one, part kindergarten, part clinic, the children come to get cuts and scratches tended, to play board games, or a rare luxury, to shampoo their hair. Normal for these children is a grinding work routine, scavenging in garbage dumps, or, if they're lucky, peddling trinkets to tourists in this city of two million. You have about an estimated 20,000 children living and working on the streets of Phnom Penh. Uh, that is actually a huge number for a city like Phnom Penh, which is relatively small. Sebastian Maro founded Friends International 18 years ago. It now serves 95% of this city's homeless youth. A former French foreign service worker, Maro took a break to visit this region. I arrived in Cambodia 1st of April 94 and um, found a situation that was um, very difficult to imagine when you see Cambodia today. Uh, no roads, no electricity, no running water, uh, everyone had guns and used them. So it was The Wild West is the best description possible. So not a place you want to stay. But what happened is that I met kids. He says he was moved by the plight of so many hungry children and decided to stay and find a way to get them into productive lives and off the street. Those streets are being transformed today. The old temples and new high-rises are being spiffed up to attract foreign tourists and investors. But Phnom Penh has also lured thousands of children and their families from the impoverished rural areas of a country still recovering from the genocidal Khmer Rouge era between 1975 and 1979, a period in which an estimated two million people died. It's a difficult existence. The children are often forced to support the family, or at least to fend for themselves. For many, it's a losing struggle, says Maro. The biggest problem we're facing now is actually the, the serious increase in drug use in this population, which is relatively new. It started in the uh, late 90s. There was no drugs before. And uh, suddenly it exploded. And now 80% of the kids are using some glue sniffing, a lot of amphetamine, and heroin is increasing. The government, struggling to control the flow of drugs from neighboring countries, has responded with a crackdown on the street. The police are always on the lookout for young people like these, most engaged in petty crime and prostitution, to support their drug habits. The government needs to show that there is no more street kid, that uh, the cities are clean. So they, 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 they do they destroy our, our building work by trying to, to get quick fixes, and that's putting kids in prison, that's uh, cleaning the streets and putting people away out of the eye, but that's not a solution. Friends International, better known in the Khmer language as Mitsam Lan, is also on the lookout for these youth, but with a very different approach. Miss Sam Lan comes here and they educate us about HIV and drugs and so on. We don't have enough to eat or a place to stay, so we take risks. We could be arrested. Along with offering clean needles, condoms, and lessons on safe behavior, Friends International counselors encourage these youth to come to a drop-in center for a meal or a bath, and when they're ready, detox, a place to live, and an education. 23-year-old Sotia has lived on the street on and off for seven years. He has struggled with drug addiction, but returned to friends for his fourth attempt to get clean and acquire job skills. When I first came here, I wasn't comfortable. I wasn't ready for the learning environment, so I quit and went back out on the street to make money. Now, the most difficult part is to try to keep myself away from drugs, from my friends in the street. But I try not to go. I can quit drugs. I can stay away from these friends. I don't want to let my parents down again or my very good friends here at the program. If he finishes, he'll have several options to develop marketable skills. Friends International offers training in everything from automotive mechanics to construction skills to hairdressing. Even after four attempts, Maro says there's a good chance he'll eventually succeed. We haven't found really any child that was 
a lost cause if you want. We worked very hard with many children for a long time to be able to, to get them to a level that was required, but we were always reasonably successful. Friends International started and runs three of Phnom Penh's finest restaurants, training grounds for students and a source of income for its programs. 17-year-old Kuntia was recruited by Friends International on the street. She was selling flowers to support her family after her father died. My experience with Friends International has been great. Now I can read, and I love cooking the most. But having Kuntia enter a training program meant she was no longer able to support her family. She still lives at home with her mother and three siblings. So an important part of the Friends International approach is to help not just the youth, but also their parents. It now employs Kuntia's mother, Sokchenda, to sew handicrafts that are sold in its boutique, another business that funds Friends International programs. Friends International helped me a lot. Without them providing me training and vocational skills, I could not feed my four children. People say, why do you put your kids in Friends International? They won't make any money. Better to take your daughter to work in the garment industry so she can make money, but I don't. My children will have a better future than me. How are you? Fine. Long time no see. Many graduates of Friends International have already gone on to a better future. In two years, Darun Rin says he picked up culinary and interpersonal skills and even a bit of English. They trained me how to like to cook the food, to serve the food to the customer, and how to talk friendly. Darun Rin got a job as a chef for the Singaporean ambassador, then went on to open his own restaurant and is thinking of more. I have maybe one more or two more. So he might plan like that, but we don't know yet. <laughs> Let's see. For every success story, however, there are many young people still struggling. Maro says the best shot at success is to intervene as early as possible in children's lives to provide early childhood education before they can fall victim to drugs. All this costs money. Restaurants and craft shops pay for about a third of Friends International's $6.5 million annual budget globally. Maro says it will take years to become self-sufficient, and until then, programs like these will depend on donations. Those have been hurt by the global economic slowdown. The current crisis is such that many of our donors um, just are not renewing contracts, have reduced uh, their amounts, have uh, less proposals than before. Luckily, we had these profits from the businesses that allowed to bridge some, but that goes only that far because our sustainability is, uh, is limited. The people watching this will say, you know, why doesn't the national government help you? Yes, and that's a very good question. Um, in some countries this is feasible. Say, for example, we should be able to access money from the Thai government, from Indonesian government. Cambodia, the budgets are not... Um, they're so donor-dependent themselves as a, as a government. Despite the funding challenges, the program now operates in eight countries in Southeast Asia and Central America, serving some 60,000 young people. And Friends International was recently invited to start a program for the first time in the United States. It will be in Las Vegas. Fred's reporting is a partnership with the Undertold Stories Project at St. Mary's University in Minnesota.